Hello everyone, Kilk here from the Semi Pro Project. Going along with our philosophy about learning games with efficiency and speed, we're going to look at what it takes to be an effective assassin. Let's get started. Many of the assassins in Heroes of the Storm share common game philosophy and strategy, but not all of them. To truly be good at all the assassins the game currently has to offer, you need to be flexible and diverse in your playstyle. To illustrate that, we're going to group assassins into two categories. Assassins who do sustained amounts of damage at a constant rate, that we'll call sustained DPS, and assassins who do large volumes of damage very quickly, but need a few seconds to recharge, that we'll call burst DPS. Let's dive deeper to give you guys a good idea of what I'm talking about. Sustained DPS assassins are heroes that are able to output a lot of damage at a constant rate, but they need time and strong positioning to be able to do so. We're looking at heroes like Sergeant Hammer, Illidan, or Raynor, who do most of their damage through auto attacks. This means it takes a longer amount of time to kill an opponent from full HP, but will result in more overall damage the longer the team fight goes on. While a burst DPS will do most, if not all, their damage in the first second or two. Examples being heroes like Jaina, Zeratul, or Nova. It's important to be able to distinguish between these heroes, as the way you play them has subtle differences. So now that we understand that, let's dive deeper into their gameplay philosophy, starting with Burst DPS. If you're playing a hero who is bursty or does a lot of damage over a very short period of time, then it's good to understand that every choice you make is extremely precious. Sure, you can help a huge amounts of damage when your cooldowns are up, but it can be another 8 or more seconds before you're able to do that kind of damage again. To add to that, getting auto attacks in on these types of heroes is very hard as well, since they've been balanced to have an extremely low health pool and sometimes lack a viable escape. This makes your choice of heroes to attack very crucial. So with that being said, how do we get the most out of our burst damage? Well, the key to that is to focus on targets that you can kill in a short amount of time. Supports, assassins, and even specialists should be your main focus. Try not to waste your damage on a tank, unless they're low enough to finish off. Now to pull off these tasks, we need to stay long enough to find the opportune time to strike. And this is accomplished by strong positioning. If you're a hero that lacks an escape, then your positioning is even more critical. A hero like Jaina can do an insane amount of burst damage, but she can also end up doing zero damage if she dies early on in a team fight, putting you behind. Position yourself in such a way that you are protected by your team, or close enough that they can run to your aid if needed. Try to stay on the outskirts of team fights, waiting for the right moment to unleash your damage on a target you can kill. And don't be afraid to engage in the team fight a little bit late. Rushing into things can make you play poorly or get killed too early, but if you wait and position yourself passively, you'll be able to get a good perspective on the team fight and kill those important squishy heroes that will turn the tide of battle in your favor. Remember, as an assassin, you can't do any damage if you're dead. Switching gears to sustained DPS, we realize that they share a lot of similarities in terms of being extremely squishy and needing to position passively. The key difference is that you want to constantly be poking and engage in the fight from afar. Playing a hero like Vala or Tychus or Raynor means you have a strong auto attack at your disposal, so try and make the most of it. Sit on the outskirts of a team fight and poke the enemy down. Try not to use your escape skills offensively unless you're absolutely certain you can get away or secure a kill after using it. And here's a little tip. If a tank or other assassin has gone to jump on you, sometimes running further away from the team fight can isolate you and ensure your death. So consider running toward your tank. If they play properly, they may be able to shake off your attacker and keep you alive. At this point, we have a good idea of how we should be positioned in team fights and who we should be attacking. So what are other ways we can prove valuable to our team? Well, since we do the most damage on our team, we're usually also the most effective heroes at killing mercenary camps. Take it upon yourself to grab them or instigate them. But remember, don't sacrifice the XP soaking of a lane to grab a mercenary camp early on. Only grab a mercenary camp if you have someone in each lane before level 10. Otherwise, you'll put your team at a level disadvantage and have trouble with team fights as the game progresses. Ask yourself the following questions before you grab a mercenary camp. Do I have people soaking in each lane before level 10? Will we push with this camp or will it push on its own while we grab an objective? Is the enemy team out of position where we can steal this camp without any resistance? And finally, is the enemy team down a hero or two where we know they won't be able to contest us? Another thing most assassins are good at is clearing creep waves, except for poor Nova. 
try to take it upon yourself to clear creep waves whenever you can. This will ensure that your creeps stay on the enemy's side of the map and are always near their base. Essentially, if your creeps are always near their base, this means that you can easily take turrets or a fort after successful engagement with the support of your creep wave. It also means you don't have to worry about the enemy's creeps overwhelming yours and pushing into your base while you're off team fighting or grabbing objectives. Finally, we get to the most important part of being an assassin, and that's not being afraid to test your limits. As an assassin player, you'll never truly understand the right way to position yourself or deal as much damage as you can without putting yourself into unfamiliar situations. Illidan really comes to mind when trying to express this point. He's a hero that heavily relies on a deep understanding of his playstyle to be effective. Try going in really hard, dealing a lot of damage, and pushing yourself into the enemy team. Pull back a little each time if you find yourself dying a lot. After a while, you'll start to understand the limits at which you're most efficient. With all this in mind, and a little practice and patience, you'll be a great assassin in no time. Let's sum up the key points. Number one, be able to distinguish between the different playstyles of assassins. Are you most effective auto attacking from afar and getting your damage in that way? Or do you rely on bursting the enemy down with a couple strong spells? Number two, play passively and put your safety first. Remember, you're not able to do any damage if you die in the fight early on. Number three, try to save your mobility skills as escapes. It's still okay to use it offensively, but only if you're certain it will lock in a kill or that you won't be putting yourself into harm's way. Number four, be the one who takes merc camps and know when the proper time is to grab them. Having to leave a lane open before level 10 is not advisable and can put you behind, so always keep that in mind. Number five, clear creep waves whenever you can. This will give you map control and put your team in a good position if you ever get a favorable trade off a team fight. Finally, don't be afraid to push yourself, even if it means dying. This will help you learn your hero's limits and make you a better player overall. Just keep in mind how and why you died so you can learn from it. Instead of getting frustrated, if you treat it as a learning experience, you will improve in no time. If you enjoyed this style of video, come check me out live at twitch.tv slash semiproproject. I focus on interacting with my chat and giving you live tutorials and explanations. See you guys next time.